You know how some YouTubers start their second channel with the behind the scenes footage of their first channel? Well if you think of the cross and the plan of salvation as God's main channel and what we're going to talk about today, the investigative judgment, is like the behind the scenes of the plan of salvation. So stick around if you want some insider footage. This is The Sandlin' Show. Hi friends, Melvin here. If you are new to this channel, we're all about providing you with guidance for Christian living in everyday life. So if that is something that you appreciate, feel free to subscribe and click that notification bell. I also want to thank everyone who supports our family and ministry. This is what you made possible. Drati comments, now I understand. So many questions were answered. Thank you so much. I know that today's topic sounds kind of strange and not even many Christians know about it, but it's going to show us something beautiful about God's character and it's extremely good news to those who believe. So five minutes on the clock, it's going to be challenging, but I'm going to try. Let's go. The message of God's main channel is Jesus can save you from your sins. But the Bible gives us some behind the scenes insights about how this works. In the Old Testament, God told a believer named Moses to build something called a sanctuary. This was like the earthly demonstration model of the real original version which is in heaven. And since we cannot see what happens in heaven, God exemplifies it through this temporary model here on earth. Through different kinds of furniture and activities and traditions, God demonstrated the process that would happen in heaven for real in how he would remove sin. Now for the Israelite back in the day, what they would need to do to get forgiveness for their wrongdoings was to take a spotless animal confess their sins over the animal and then sacrifice it. That was it. That was all the sinner needed to do to get forgiveness. And in the same way now thousands of years later if we want to be forgiven we confess our sins to God and we accept the voluntary sacrifice that Jesus already made for us and that's it. You receive forgiveness because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. But even though the sinner could go home forgiven the process wasn't done yet. Behind the scenes, the priest would take the blood of the animal that was sacrificed, sprinkle it on the furniture inside the sanctuary, representing that the sins were transferred from the sinner to the animal, to the blood of the animal, into the sanctuary. And then once a year you had an event called the Day of Atonement. It's a hard word, but it simply means at one month. So making God's people one again with God. On this special occasion they cleansed the sanctuary from all the sins that had been coming in during the year and they were taken out, removed. And in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 30 it says what the purpose is of this special event. That you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. So without sin standing in the way you can be one again with God. So basically the sins were destroyed, removed, no trace left. Now remember that the earthly sanctuary was just a demo model that showed what would happen in the heavenly sanctuary. Now check this out, this is from a prophecy in Daniel chapter 8 where verse 14 tells us for 2300 days then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Why this is so interesting is because the days for the yearly atonement they were already given in the law. So this is announcing a new, a special event in history where not the earthly demo model sanctuary would be cleansed, but the real thing, the heavenly sanctuary. When you do the math based on the information that we get from the context and Daniel chapter 9, this time prophecy points us to the year 1844. Whoa! So what happened exactly in 1844? Well, what happened on the Day of Atonement? The sins that throughout the year had been confessed, they were permanently removed so that there wouldn't be a trace of them left. And in 1844 this process would start for real in heaven. Now then here's the question, how do you know which sins have been confessed and therefore can be removed? Well God of course knows, but he does something special. Talking about this event in Daniel chapter 7 verse 10, a thousand thousands ministered to him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. In other words, God doesn't just arbitrarily decide and announce the results, he holds an open court. 
going through the books, through the evidence, full transparency to the whole universe. That is the God that we serve. He doesn't do things in the corner. He does it out in the open so that all can see that the judgment is fair so that the accusers, the devil and the fallen angels will be silenced and the angels in heaven can feel secure that no one will come to heaven that will mess it all up by sinning again. So in 1844, a judgment started in the heavenly sanctuary that investigates who has confessed their sins, taken hold of Jesus, his sacrifice, said that those sins can be permanently removed. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, it says, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. So God's people will be judged first. And of course, that makes sense that this also needs to happen before Jesus returns. Because when Jesus comes, he will bring a reward for his people. He will bring his people to heaven. So before all that can happen, it of course needs to be known who belongs to God's people. So imagine that the books are opened and they come across Karen or Linda or Alicia and the devil is like, I remember her. No way that she can be saved and go to heaven. She used to sleep around, be disrespectful to her parents, do drugs and all kinds of things. And God is looking through the books and he's like, I don't see it. And the devil is like, what do you mean you don't see it? Give me. I'm looking through the pages, I can't read what it says. It's all, it's all covered. And then Jesus steps forward and says, that's right, she's confessed her sins and I have covered them with my blood. They are paid for. She's my daughter and I'm gonna bring her home. It's like at the cross, Jesus paid for our sins. The price is paid in full. It was a perfect sacrifice. And during the investigative judgment, it's like Jesus showing his receipt to anyone who wonders if you really can be saved. Now, here's why I believe that God gave us this peek behind the scenes because this gives us evidence on which we can base our faith. Understanding how this earthly demo model works gives us confidence that though we cannot look into heaven, that we know that God is permanently removing sin. We don't need to live in uncertainty about if confessing our sins and accepting Jesus' sacrifice, if it's good enough for us to be able to be saved. We can look back at this demo model of the sanctuary, which confirms that if we do that, that we can count on that our sins are fully removed. There won't be a trace left. And that is why Daniel 7 verse 22 calls it, a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. After this investigative judgment, the removal of sin, we will be clean without sin before the Lord once and for all. And we can be one with God. Isn't that amazing? Friends, I hope that this video was helpful to you in some way. If it was and you like this, then I think you will like this next video as well. Feel free to check it out. We'll see you there. Maranatha.